I just kind of want to be, I want to be popular off of personality. My life is so boring. Buying souvenirs every time I attend somewhere because that's, that's what life is about. And acceptance is not going to fix your mental health problems. <laughs> it is Black History Month. It's the first day. My nails look absolutely sick. My face is very shiny because I put on some Vaseline over my sunscreen. I usually put it underneath my eyes and my nose because my nose get really dry. Well, it used to. Now I'm noticing that it's a lot more oily than usual. I layered my hair, which I don't really like because I'm not like a professional at layering. And I did my rollers. So my hair looks more presentable. I just want to go grocery shopping. I feel like this year I just want to make things fun. Yeah, I put on my Mugler perfume that I have in travel size. And I also use my Fenty Butter. Listen, I made sure that they gave me the travel size of all three um, butter drops. The cinnamon, the vanilla, and the original. Because I don't want just one. I want all three. And they'll last me a decent amount of time. I also realized that I don't want to be a product influencer junkie like i don't want to do that and i also don't really want to be called an influencer or to be an influencer i just kind of want to be i want to be popular off of personality <laughs> i want to be a personality hire okay that's all i want to do i have my scarf that i got from plato's closet it's like a michael kors it's not like it is and it's so cute and so light it's supposed to be colder today so i was gonna wear my black coat with this. I don't know how to wear scarves though. I want to sneeze because I low-key have a perfume sensitivity but I don't care because I'll rub smell good. I got pets that I'm allergic to. That's how much I don't care. I don't know this how how it goes. I'm just going to wear it with this black coat. I think it's I got it as a gift. It's Calvin, Calvin Klein but I think she got it from like Burlington um yeah so i need to realistically save and i had car problems yesterday oh my god so i had a recall on my car right and i'm like i really don't feel like doing it but they said it's supposed to take just a little bit of time so let me go ahead and do it they do an ex inspection on my car in the meantime which kind of irritated me because i didn't i didn't bring my car here for no damn inspection okay but anyways this man's telling me I need all these filters and fluids and all that kind of stuff. Mind you, I wanted to go to the Dreamville Festival in Raleigh with one of my uh, with one of my friends, and the tickets are like three fifty. I spent two hundred and ninety seven dollars yesterday, which would have been my ticket price. Well, a little bit of it, it would have been enough for me to cover my ticket today. Well, yesterday because I went to about yesterday. And I had to prioritize my car. And that was only two things out of like a list of eight. So this is what adulthood is like. Prioritizing. I need new shoes. I need those silver Vomero shoes. Oh my God, they're so pretty. Um, I don't really like the brown summer Fridays. I don't know why. I, don't, I like it on my bottom lip. I don't like it on my top lip. It looks like a cast over it. That's why I like the pink one because the pink one doesn't leave like a cast or anything on it. Did my makeup and I absolutely hate it. The way I wanted to do, to do my makeup was like a pink blushy look. It was so cute, but it's way beyond my, you know, skill level but i wanted to try anyways so i was like let me try it. i think i have pink in my palettes um no i don't i don't have any pinks i have peaches i have a glitter pink but i don't have the pink that was in the picture i just started using white shadow for some reason and i got this look so and the model in the picture is like stunning absolutely stunning her bone structure her it's just stunning so I knew I wasn't going to be able to pull it off like hers, but I was hoping that I can at least pull it off like how I need to look good and like a pink. But I don't have the skills, nor do I have the supplies, nor do I have the face shape. So this is what I came up with. And it's okay in person. Like it's not horrible, at least to my subjective eyes. And I need to soak off these nails. Like I'm being very lazy right now. 
but I really need to take a break from press on so that's coming up my hair is kind of nice I haven't combed or brushed it all day my life is so boring I am going on a very strict budget which kind of is funny because I went to the mall today and I bought a Yankee candle but it was 40% off so I spent eight dollars and then I bought those pretzel bites I forgot what the pretzel place is called but this is like my fourth time getting it from them it's so good especially when it's fresh and hot like oh my god but that's the last thing i made chili today i absolutely love chili i had two bowls already it's still in the crock pot i'm gonna transition everything over to like story i'm a soup person y'all i like soup every food that i think about i don't want to eat it like i don't want to eat fried chicken i don't want to eat anything but soup plus it's easier for me to make like it's not really too much thought in it besides like ingredients and like proportion and things like anyways I was gonna do b-roll but I changed my mind because I want to talk it is February 3rd and I want to go to the Nash year museum today I am wearing like an all black fit I know that my bra is see-through it's kind of intentional I kind of sort of like it and I have on this black long sweater kind of skirt I'm so sorry my bathroom is not huge and it's just not aesthetic you know I'm poor so yeah, I really like this this vibe. My toes need to be done. I need new shoes. I need a lot of things, but we're trying to budget, which I'll talk about maybe later in the day, but I just want to get out of the house and just have a good time. I haven't touched up my hair today, which is kind of interesting because it looks so nice. And all I did was add layers to it back all over again, because I had to remove the a few pieces from the top that I layered incorrectly and I wasn't feeling it and I had leftover hair so I was like yeah this is a perfect time and I relayered everything and it looks nice um I also did my makeup I don't have mascara on because I don't want to wear mascara I hate fucking removing it I'm so sorry and I have on black liner because I like black liner I don't care I see so many videos of like like the 70s, not 70s, the 80s and 90s, like the early 2000s when black women were like wearing very bold lip gloss looks. And I just love it. And black liner is a part of that. Okay. I expanded out into pink. Like I do pink now and that was not me before. I was like a brown liner girl. I'm about to put the Fenty Butter Drop on my legs and stuff because it is a slit in the back. Hopefully I can get a better picture, y'all, but probably not. I'm just putting it on my legs and with that, I have on a bodysuit, so I don't have on any panties. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm not wearing panties most of the time. I just don't like panties. I just put the lotion on. And because I use this lotion, or butter drop, whatever you want to call it, with the mook layer. I like them together. They work for me. If you don't like them together, that's fine. Oh my God, it's making me like I have a box body and I don't. It's okay. It's, it's okay. I left the museum and I was only there for like 30 minutes because I should have checked when they were going to start their new exhibits because I had already seen the ones that were open and available and the newest one opens on the 15th so I can go back for that time I just paid two hours for no reason but it's okay I have two cats in the background Shumpy shower last night trying to take a shower again to like not be so excessive but i'm gonna take a shower when i get back um got a busy day 
I'm going to volunteer from 9 to 10. And then I have to go to work. I did transition to my new lab yesterday. yesterday and I had a meeting with the postdoc I'll be working with closely. And she just gave amazing vibes. So I'm really hopeful and just excited for the research I'll be doing based off of the articles and stuff she told me to read and the way they want me to format things. It just feels a lot more aligned of what I need from like a trainee position. So hopefully everything continues to go well, even though it's just like day one. But there's a lot more flexibility in my day now where I don't have to go to work physically most days. So I have to separate them food wise because Spice has a very specific food because she has sensitivities and Stormy doesn't. Because I really need to leave at eight. It takes me 38 minutes to get to the Duke Raleigh Hospital. That's where I volunteer. I was gonna take my hair out two days ago, but I'm like, I'm not gonna do it in a weekday because I know how exhausting it is for me to like wash my hair. I have to also trim it. I don't have to trim it, but I like trimming my hair. I like how it feels when I trim it, even if it's like excessive, because I feel like I trim my hair every two to three months. I mean, I don't care. Um, I need to brush my teeth, wash my face. This is the shirt I was talking about. I was very obvious that you're a volunteer. And I have my badge here. My head looks like a coconut. But still a bad. Okay, I have my fit girl pouch for a comedies. Um, I'm going to wear my new New Balances. I'm obsessed. I can't get over it. A scarf, which has a lot of perfume on it. So hopefully it doesn't translate over to my too much. I also have my gloves, but I'm not putting them on until I'm about to walk out. When you volunteer at Duke Raleigh, at least from my experience, they give you like essentials. They give you like a volunteer bag, I mean, um, handbook that I always keep on me when I volunteer. And they also give you a book bag and a pen but I don't have my pen, so I just brought like a regular pen. Here's a very beat up volunteer bag that I use for quite literally everything. Handbook, pen. For y'all. I am done volunteering on my way to work. I did not bring a change of shirt, but I did bring a jacket that I could just wear over it. And I feel like I'm being put on display. But, um, yeah. If you do want to have a volunteer opportunity, Duke Raleigh, if you are in North Carolina, Raleigh, the RCP area, whatever you need volunteering, you can come here. And the floor that I work on is so fucking, like, they're amazing. Everybody's friendly. They let you know what they need from you that day. Um, patients are relatively in and out. So you don't really have to sit in with patients as much, which kind of sucks in a way. But like, they just have a really good structure to make sure the patient experience is well. So um, I'm out of breath because I just walked up to the fifth floor. I never had to park this high before. to the library at my job to get essentials of epidemiology. I have two other books they're going to send to me via email, but I just need like a clear picture of like epidemiology again to like refresh my memory and stuff, especially with the statistical analysis stuff. Yeah, that's where I'm at y'all. Um, I didn't have to come in today, but I wanted to because I want to be productive still. So yeah, that's the book I'm going to read. It's pretty, um, you know, if you are doing epidemiology research, it's very inclusive as it relates to the information that you need to know, at least for the lab that I'm currently in now. It's very helpful. So I'm like, I remember a lot of this stuff, but I don't remember a lot of this stuff, if that makes sense. So 
I go through it, make notes. Give me more. Go be somebody. Bitch. Go clock in. Get the f off the internet. Go clock in. Go get some hours towards your check at the end of the motherfucking week. That's very, very low. Good morning. I look like Cynthia Doll. But I did my hair in some perm rods, and this is just the only way I know how to keep my roots stretched out and also to stretch my hair out to have like more body. I know frizz and stuff is a part of the package, so I don't really care about the ends being frizzy and stuff, but I do care about my roots reverting so that my hair can be bigger and bigger every day. I have to go to work. I have a few meetings, and I also want to get my work done that I was assigned yesterday at least. 75% done today. We have some meetings today, but it's more so like a branch wide meeting. And you know something else I've noticed? People, people like to put a limitation on how much you can speak about your background if your background was negative compared to if your background was very positive. I know oil doesn't hydrate your hair. Like I'm not doing it for that purpose. I'm only doing it for like aesthetic reasons. I just like the idea of doing this. So I do it. I think. I think I know I'm not gonna do another sew in for like a decent amount of time, and surprisingly, my leave out is not destroyed. I thought my hair was gonna be like fried and dyed and straight, and as you can tell, it is blending very well. Also, as it relates to like dating, I am not dating, I don't plan to date. I think, at not think, at knowing this moment in my life, I need to focus on myself. You're probably like, why do you have on loungewear? Like, what is happening? If you haven't noticed, I can wear what I want to wear to my job. I don't have to dress professional. So I use this very old mascara from Maybelline. I've had this for actually years. But I do think so it's a little slow. I use the Fenty Butter Drop, the original Dylan Blue from, from Versace. It smells so good together. Even though it be cold outside, y'all, I don't be getting that cold. I have to let room this too. So I try not to overdo it with the jackets. Or at least give myself an option to wear an intermediate jacket. I'm going to use my Fit Girl pouch. Because I hate carrying around my purse. But I also like having certain things with me. I'm one of them girls. I'm sorry. I need my lip gloss. I need my lotion. I need my hand sanitizer. All of that. And I also need my inhaler. And this is what I mean by the brown from Summer Friday. This was the first one I ever bought. And it's just not the color that I like personally, but I'm going to keep it because I bought it. I also signed up for Second Look for Howard, like a virtual, like an in-person tour. I'm going to do that in April. I'm going to take y'all along with me. Whether or not I get in or not, I'm on a wait list. I'm trying to do as much as I can to indulge myself into their culture so that maybe it can make me look better. I don't know. But I also did want to see the campus. If I do have to reapply, I want to make sure that I'm, you know, mindful of whether or not I actually want to reapply, if it's worth it. Hey y'all, I'm back from work. How do I want to say this? Um, I can't film what I'm doing while I'm at work when it relates to me being in meetings because it involves people faces. I don't want to do that, basically. Even if it was allowed, I don't want to do that. So I had like this very interesting seminar. In essence, the talk was really good because the epidemiologist focuses on the environment's impact on reproduction. She started off with like her background. She talked about her own personal investment in the topic of reproduction. Her mom was like a feminist. Her mom was very heavily educated and kind of like encouraged her to do the same thing and she uses data from this one specific database that has over 59,000 black women that are sourced out and basically she's trying to see the impact of the environment and fertility and she gave off quotes that black women have mentioned as relates to the topic of infertility and how we often feel underrepresented when people are talking about infertility and how it seems as though those who want to fix the problem or understand the problem of infertility are not including black women within such studies. So she's trying to 
fill in that gap. I'm a black woman, obviously, but I'm also a black woman that to my understanding, I'm able to reproduce. I've never actually tried it for, you know, I've always been on birth control or been very careful with sex. That's just my thing. I don't want to have a kid right now in this moment, but maybe eventually I will feel competent enough to have a child and feel like I can bring life and actually be productive in that pursuit. I want to feel safe through my pregnancy. I want to feel safe during my delivery. I want to make sure that my environment is not negatively impacting my pursuit to be a mother if I choose to be that. So it's just very interesting to know certain things and it's just crazy. I took a walk around our lake. Listen to me. I could have sworn this lake was like under a mile long. That is over half a mile. And I was severely dehydrated. 0.6 miles in, I was like, yeah, I am feeling something that's not normal. And then it took like an additional 0.2 for me to realize, oh, you ate, but you didn't drink enough water. You are dehydrated. So when I came back, I got some Powerade because drinking plain water does not help fast enough for my dehydration so I use Powerade. I used to be in band, I used to be a dancer in the flag, girl. That was the quickest way to soothe that problem for me and it helped me so. Then I did some literature summaries. Well I finished up the two that I started on. I also signed up, so, signed up for some courses regarding how to actually do a proper literature search and EndNote because we use EndNote in my new lab group. Um. I did a little socializing, some coffee early in the morning before the two important meetings. And now I'm here. Now I'm overstimulated and I just wish I could stop being that way. I really wish that talking to people made me feel charged, but it's legit the opposite. Man, I'm having one of those moments. Like, I'm like feeling underwhelmed with my life. Like, and I feel like I'm feeling this way because I'm... Oh, y'all are so Please, I don't feel like putting this up right now. It's not me. It's not fall over. And my battery's gonna die. Oh my god. Basically, I feel like my life is very boring right now. And I just want to do more things, but I... Yeah, I like my brows. The brows are giving. My face feels different. I actually feel pretty. You know, this picture make it look like I got a BBL. I don't got no BBL. <laughs> Woo. It's giving BBL. BBL. When really it's just the pose, I just lifted my right leg. That's it, just lifted the right leg. Um, I'm pretty sure I just got another interview invite, but I'm, I need to see it on my big screen because I only see half on my phone. Yeah, I just got a interview invite. It feels really weird right now. I don't, I don't know how to feel. It was so random. Everything is always random. I don't know how to feel right now. I was just stressed out filing my taxes because I owe way more than what is reasonable. But I guess this is supposed to make me feel better. <laughs> We will reconvene because right now I feel too many different emotions to pinpoint excitement right now. But it's crazy. This 
was watching. Hello. The last time that I remember vlogging was the day that I did my taxes. I got an interview invite from Morehouse School of Medicine. I'm extremely grateful. I am extremely optimistic that three is the magic number and somehow, some way, someone will want me to be in their school and I will be going to medical school. And this additional interview just gave me another opportunity to hone in on things that maybe could have hindered me for Mercer, let's say, or Howard in solidifying an acceptance. So I'm going to be very positive and op optimistic about my chances of being in medical school in the fall. But, and we'll get into that a little bit more. I'm going to actually bring my camera through every preparation thing that I do, whether it's at a coffee shop, at work, at home. I'm going to show y'all what I'm doing and all of his messiness and all of his imperfection. I'm doing this because these videos, at least from my experience, do not exist on YouTube platforms and rawness and failures. And that's why I'm contemplating posting my Howard interview preparation and interview day and also me being waitlisted. morning y'all it is february the 20 20th 21st whatever it's one of those two days i don't remember but i put on my board the number of days before my morehouse school of medicine interview it's actually 17 days so i'm gonna fix that i just feel like it's nice to have um like a a note card immediately when I wake up or when I'm in my room and I just randomly look over at my board. I'm more familiar with Morehouse School of Medicine based off my pipeline program, but I am going to start creating my document sometime today or tomorrow or this week at least because I do have a pretty busy day today work related and then a pretty busy day tomorrow work re work related. But Thursday and Friday should be a freer day, if not free days, because I want to get all my work done today and tomorrow plus I volunteer tomorrow morning so I can't even use that time but yeah we have 17 days before we interview with Mars School of Medicine and that's all I need that's all I need I have not spoken to y'all <laughs> and I don't know how long I, I, I don't know how long and I look crusty and musty but I took a shower I washed my ass everything is clean the thing is my face is just dusty and well I even wash my face too the whole point is I look crusty I have a symposium tomorrow the last place I left off was this morning when I watched the virtual medical school tour for Morehouse School of Medicine. I got really excited watching that video. I 
it was weird and it's also very weird because i've seen all of these advancements because i went to clark and i was a part of a pipeline program i think i already told y'all that but it just was really nice to like see it in action so i'm excited i caught myself like getting into this weird spiral of like worrying about the bad side of things which is i haven't heard from mercer which means i am waitlisted i'm gonna go ahead and say that today is like the last week that people typically get an acceptance before getting like the waitlist and the rejection sent out and i think today is supposed to be the day where they call people or even i don't know i've already made up my mind where i stand because I can't keep like I keep beating myself up about that interview and I can't do that and because I was thinking about that so heavily I was prolonging preparing for my interview for Morehouse and I'm like I have another opportunity I have another chance I don't want to let all the negativity cloud something that's positive right now I have another chance period there's a video in the background ignore it but look target eight that little one thing um this headband is definitely not black girl natural hair friendly no she's not that um i have to put her right here for her to fit for me anyways we're going pink i'm on 10 today i don't know why i don't know why i haven't taken 10 milligrams of this and i'm still sniffing throughout my life but it's definitely better to somewhere else and pick your ass up, take it over there, and keep it coming. Playing each piece like losing it hurts. This ain't checkers. You got to come get my king. All these other pieces are just a means to do. I'm not having my time wasted. With you. much that i got from the conference as it relates to footage but i had a very good time i was able to actually get to know a lot more of the people that i work alongside and it was just very refreshing it was very nice and i felt welcomed and i felt heard which was a very beautiful thing my hair looks very sparse but in real life it doesn't look that sparse first of all don't play with my density secondly the conference that I'm talking about, if you didn't get any clips of that before then, is the UNC Gillings Minority Student Caucus pres presentation of the 45th Minority Health Conference. And it was in North Carolina is where UNC is at, so you get the gist. But it was today. They gave us this booklet to kind of keep afloat as everything was progressing through. They gave us a lot of history of the conference. They gave a lot of background regarding the people who helped put it together, which were... I think they're graduate students. I don't know. Either way, these people are fucking amazing. Y'all did a great job. If you ever, ever come across this video, which I doubt, but you did a great job. The conference was very enlightening. I wasn't able to see the second keynote speaker, but I did see the first one. And I also went to one of the smaller breakout sessions. And we'll talk about that. So the first keynote speaker that I was able to actually watch, her name is, I don't want to butcher it, but basically her talk was regarding killing them slowly racism and the child health crisis oh uh, it was so good because for one she gave like her aspect of what she's contributing also why these things are very important and also she described children as if they are actual beings outside of adults oftentimes in my experience children are viewed as an extension an utter extension not that this extension has their own life outside of that person or their parent you know what I mean and it's just very odd and it's not fair to kids because if we do not allow them to have certain freedoms or to be their own person and view them as their own person we can often contribute to their mental health and their health crisis or the health crisis that we're seeing and ultimately like we have to stop minimizing their experiences by doing that what do i mean by minimizing their experiences based off of what she said your children may only go to work i mean only go to school or only go to child care or only venture out with you in the world but they are a sponge they are scientists in her words they are observing 
everything from looks to speech to how you treat certain people how you decide not to interact with certain people how certain people treat them and they internalize those things and they make decisions based off of those things and to not have conversations with them to to not address certain issues that they, they may be facing like if you have a black child for example avoiding the topic of colorism or racism it's just doing them a big disservice not fostering an environment where they are their own person and they are validated in their experiences and also protected from external people that can make them feel bad about their own existence is very critical i keep losing my train of thought because they keep slamming their bodies into my fucking door and it's throwing me off she gave a beautiful talk. She gave us three Ps, which I already forgot them already. She also did not code switch so completely that her talk was boring. Her talk was very interesting because she was herself just presenting her interests in her realm of scope. And I love that. I think it's beautiful and it's something that I look at more often or I'm more in tuned into because I, from my, pre my, my previous experiences, I have felt like I needed to morph myself into something that I'm not in order to be accepted or to be presentable. And it's like, I'm fine the way that I am. Obviously, there is some level of time and place, but I know time and place. I know time and place. I know how to gauge it. But time and place does not mean that I need to stop being myself completely in order to fit in and morph into whatever is socially more acceptable like no people are their own people and i want you know very eccentric people to be that i want very calm people to be that i want people who are more expressive like me to be that like be that that's who you are like you know so she was great let's go on to the next thing um i did see some of the posters i wasn't able to actually talk to any of the people that were doing posters because three of the people i kind of knew because they're in my um, new research group and I also get very overwhelmed if I'm in a very tight space and it's hella people like I just am not one I don't have no survival skills or social skills when it relates to that because I'm not going to initiate anything it's so bad like every poster was filled it was a very intimate poster session where somebody was going to come to your poster if you've ever done poster presentation sometimes you'll have your poster there and you'll just be like no one is coming because there's like a thousand other posters but here it was more intimate then i went to the morning breakout session where i sat in on the talk called supporting healthy outcomes within black and brown perinatal communities that talk almost made me cry because one of the speakers it felt like she was getting emotional well i felt a shift in her communication and it sounded like she was kind of choking up over her words when she started talking about the suicide rate of Latino ex women who are pregnant. And it was a shocking percentage. It's really, it's really high. And I also, I got a little bit emotional when I started seeing the percentage of like how black women are impacted in childbirth. It's like I know these things because not only am I a, not only am I a black woman and I haven't had any kids or been pregnant myself, but I have a mom who has three kids. I have a sister who has my nephew i have a grandmother like i know women who have been pregnant and their their experiences are very in line with a lot of the statistics of black women in pregnancy and black women in these healthcare facilities during that time period um it's on my phone the percentages of what i want to talk about i'm glad i actually took pictures Oh, I gotta order my DoorDash. I'm starving. I'm, I'm, I'm treating myself, honey. This acceptance is me treating myself. I can't really celebrate anything right now because I don't have people with me, but we're gonna try our best. But, um, wait, what did I just post on Instagram? I'll put it right here. It'll be right here. And then we can just go over it together. But basically, first bullet point, 40% of black women experience maternal mental health symptoms. I'm not surprised. I've heard it. I've seen it. I'll probably likely experience it if I don't get the proper perinatal care because this proves to me that it's not just during pregnancy that these structures are important. It's like before pregnancy, after pregnancy, those things, all of that encompasses your quality of life, your quality of care, your, your outcomes. And it's just very important. Next one. Black women are three to four three to five times more likely to die from pregnancy related deaths compared to white women. Are we surprised? 60%, 60% 60 
60% of pregnant related deaths are preventable in black women. 60%. That, that was what made me emotional because I'm like, you're telling me that most of these deaths are preventable, that these kids could have their mothers, these husbands or boyfriends or partners could have their significant other to help them take care of their kids. These families could not be so shifted because now who's going to take responsibility over, responsibility over a newborn if the newborn survives? Like, ugh. But yeah, that was it. I um it was the same posters so I didn't go back to the posters but here's the first keynote speaker I think her name is Ioma Aruka I don't I don't want to butcher it oh my god please don't hate me if you ever this video you did a great job you were very inspiring and you know you gave me a lot of knowledge in my brain and then this is the second keynote speaker I was not able to watch her talk but I'm sure it was amazing because anytime you see a black woman in these spaces you know she's fucking amazing let's just be real i think that if you even are remotely interested in public health or research in general to better understand people of color experiences you should definitely go for it and attending these type type of events if you have the opportunity to is amazing you should do it so oh my god i also forgot i forgot to tell y'all that i also bought a shirt from the event as well it was 15 dollars. zoom in this is the front and then this is the big I got it in the small that's all I did honey buying souvenirs every time I attend somewhere because that's, that's what life is about life is about experiences Fun tour facts. You do not need to be polite. You do not need to look at me. He's vastly more amusing to look at. <laughs> um. I thought I was filming and I wasn't but I just decided that I was gonna show y'all what I bought from the gift shop when you leave at least when I love she gave us a magnet that we can put on top of our fridge or refrigerator I bought three different matted photo assortments so you have the cougar which this one is so cute just such a beautiful model-esque picture which is very like you know how I get down then I have another one from a bobcat named Willow. The names are also on the back, by the way, to help you. Then we have a serval, serval named Bowie. The first one, I don't know how to pronounce the name, and I just thought this is so cute with the teeth out. Um, yeah, that's all I really got besides some additional informational cards. I would say the tour was a good experience. I was just cold, so I wish I would have brought my jacket. I don't know why I overestimated my ability to just be warm when I'm not physically doing anything that's like strenuous but yeah the tour guide she gave she gave a good presentation I'm not even gonna try to like find anything wrong she did a good job to me kept me entertained the animals are not performing so if you do come you have to be open to the idea of some of the animals being asleep or not wanting to be seen or anything of that nature because the lions were asleep until the very last end of our tour where they started roaring, which really isn't a roar. Like television has morphed our idea of how animals actually sound and behave. The last tiger, Carolina, she was absolutely talkative and adorable and cute, which I have those that footage somewhere in here. And they just don't sound what you think. They, they don't sound how you think they'll sound because you have been lied to. I'm not gonna take my hair out till like 30 minutes before my interview. Oh, I forgot.
forgot that I pretty much did not vlog anything leading up to this and I had so many different plans to like involve y'all my mental health has been in the trash can I'm just gonna be 100% with y'all like I'm grateful for my interview I'm grateful for the opportunity I'm also excited but life doesn't stop happening to you because something good happens as well at least not in my life yeah so I'm just like going over my interview document I was using my phone but I'm like, so I was using my phone and I started listening to Renaissance because the album usually motivates me but right now I'm not really feeling motivated I'm feeling anxious and nervous and like they have two interviews like it's two interviews so if you interview at Morehouse you have two interviews one almost immediately when it starts and then another one a little bit before it ends like, and I also have questions that I'll probably write out on a sticky note just to have on the side because I can't remember all of my questions I hope I do well I'm trying to detach myself away from it I'm pretty sure I'll see y'all afterwards I know y'all are probably like what are you doing to your hair my hair is gonna be in a braid out I just wanted to wear my natural hair so hopefully that doesn't rub them the wrong way I have to erase all of that even though it's related to them like I just want my background to just be like primarily my wall I just ate oatmeal I don't know I don't know I don't know I just am not in a good mood that's what it is I'm just not in a good mood and it has nothing to do with the school it's me and I'm, I guess I'm also tired of like this anxiety shoot like I'm tired of like okay now I have to prove myself again now I have to prove myself again I truly feel like I couldn't be the kind of I couldn't be the person that had like eight interviews and went to all eight of them I'm telling you all it takes is an acceptance from one of the schools or three of the schools that I had in my top choice and then I'm stopping like if you can do that you are very strong and you probably like talking you probably like you know doing a little thug this one not me not me so it's 7 35 I have a lot of time I'm just gonna try to calm myself down keep reviewing my note sheet and um yeah There's hello guys that I'm back not only that they see themselves as more powerful my hair is like this i told y'all i wanted to do a braid out so i did a braid out um my hair looks great honestly i feel a little bit better um i did drink my coffee which kind of helped me feel a little bit better um i ran through a few questions like after i got off of the camera for a second and then i started listening to the bell hooks all about love audio version and honestly this is my second time listening to it i just think it's a comfort read or listen so i just wanted to play it to calm down my nerves um i don't have my lip gloss on so that's why i have like makeup without lip gloss and all i did was put on blush foundation and concealer besides like doing my brows i've decided that i'm gonna let my cats be in my bathroom in my closet my bathroom in my my closet because I can't have them out while I'm interviewing. It just will not function well. So that's just how it's going to have to go. Um, I'm nervous because I don't want to stumble over my words. But I know that when you're having a conversation with someone, you're not always going to be like super articulate for every single sentence that you create. It's just how you fix it, so to speak. That's one concern that I have for myself. Um... I, I remember everything I've done, but for some reason, the anxiety of like having to remember the intricacies and someone ask you something that you did years ago is like giving me anxiety. I'm like, you could ask me about my research. I probably will remember 95% of it. But if you start asking me about like, I don't know. I don't know. I, that's the point. The I don't know part is kind of giving me anxiety. I went over the questions that are more likely to be asked for Morehouse School of Medicine. They also have like definition questions. They'll poss possibly ask you like, what is social determinants, which I'm in a new lab that cares about things like that. And I recently went to a conference that highlighted the social determinant stress 
and how our environment can add to that and all the keynote speakers which i think i mentioned in this vlog or my last vlog i don't know also what is health equity so i know these definitions and i can frame how i want to define it and give examples for that it's 9 12 i haven't gotten any emails from them i'm going to use my work laptop the camera is way better and i'm going to use natural sunlight which is what i'm using right now have a backup light just in case something i don't know is so i don't know um what else i just need i was gonna write out some notes but it's like i do better off the dome unfortunately and notes would just throw me off any presentation i've ever done there was no notes and if there were notes i did not pay attention to them so i just hope that through the mock interviews i've done the real interviews i've done and them all being traditional that just having two interviews within a day will not stress me out enough to like fumble the interview and i'm really thinking about like what would my life look like as like a real adult now back in atlanta if i'm able to stay in intra which is right across the street from morehouse then that'll be a perfect scenario but i want my own apartment y'all i just want my own space I want to cultivate like a nice little living area for myself and have my stress days, have whatever I need to have in the safety of my own apartment, especially doing such an anxiety inducing like experience for four years. So hopefully I'm able to do that. And I'm also realizing that a lot of people have like partners, they have support and I don't have that. And do I want to even further that by being in a city where I don't know people and I do know people like from my university like staff and stuff but I don't have a foundation there anymore so that will be pretty interesting but things I will consider after the fact I just hope I do well now and my stomach is like literally I am officially done with my interview day I just have to send over my thank you letters to the people that interviewed me I hate that my shirt looks so bad drowned out and bright it's cream it's not even white but um if i'm being 100% honest with y'all that was the best interview day i've had for all three of my interviews it felt like i could be myself everybody was extremely conversational like it was the best interview day and i had two women interview me two physicians um an internalist and a preventative care and honestly they were great like I didn't feel well I do kind of feel bad after the second interview because the last question that she asked me was okay I have to present you to the committee what do you think I need to say to like to boost you up like basically how can I brag about myself and what can I bring to the school I don't know why that question choked me up a little bit I mean I know why I don't like talking to myself and talking about myself to that degree and like that and I also practiced this question. This question is on my note, my notes um, document, but it just gave me a lot of anxiety. I'm like, <sighs> I answered it the best way that I can. So if I had to point out any mishap, that would be my mishap. But I still said what I needed to say. It just took me a moment to like get around to that point. I'm just exhausted. Like y'all, I am so tired. It is sickening. I didn't even eat. I need to eat. But yeah um they didn't give us a timeline of when they'll hear they'll let us know so that could be it's probably gonna be next month or whatever but i'm tired i have given myself enough time in between to not be as exhausted as i was after my interview i just want to leave the vlog being motivational and giving y'all like an ounce of vulnerability like I did in the last vlog um everyone's pathway to medicine to becoming a doctor is truly individualistic you get to set expectations for yourself you get to set goals for yourself that aligns with what you want to do and what kind of physician you want to be I will emphasize the importance of not choosing a school simply off of prestige but to choose schools that actually align with what you want to do. It doesn't serve me to attend a university that does not cater to that specific demographic of people. Because although I've grown up in an underserved circumstance, I am not the only demographic within that umbrella. 
Therefore, I would need to diversify my experience to be better equipped and to attend a university that does that for you. If that's your expectation, that's what you should go for. And that's something that I've learned because I felt bad. I was like, wow, no prestigious school saw my application. It was like, oh, I need her. But I had to realize that I don't technically want to go to those schools either based off of my own mission alone. The only reason I applied to Duke, for example, was because I had experience with the hospital and Duke is very prestigious surgery wise. So I was like, I need to go to this school because of that. But honestly, the mission does not align with what I want. Amazing school, great school. I'm not taking away from that fact. I just want you to be very honest with yourself and what you are going to medical school for. And I'm also not trying to downgrade the importance of or the significance that a university like Duke or any major school resources that can be provided for you like those schools have resources that are insane so that is not my point just make sure you're doing what's best for you make sure you figure out your why because if you do not know your why I promise you you will be if you have the chance to you go into these interviews you will have a very hard time explaining your why if you don't even know it some people are not truly self-aware and i need you to grow some self-awareness you need to understand that you just need self-awareness because self-awareness will get you a long way you also need people on your side to properly criticize you i cannot stress that enough like i received criticism on every aspect of my application and even my interview. I didn't have to do a mock interview for this one because I pretty much already did this twice mock interview wise and practice my questions. I just didn't film it y'all because I was not in the best mental space. Probably finna go right back down to where I was honestly. But um, another thing, right? Um, an acceptance is not gonna fix your mental health problems. <laughs> it won't. So if you have any issues or any struggles, it is best to proactively keep working on them because the clarity of, oh, I'll be going to medical school does not fix your problems. I'm not saying that I'm speaking from experience, but um, I'm just speaking. Uh, Yeah, this is a roller coaster. I can't even lie to you. Like it's a roller coaster, but I'm grateful and I'm thankful. Yeah, so thank you so much for watching my video. I'm very scattered brain. I do apologize. I'm sorry if you watch my vlogs and you're like, this, you know what I mean? But hopefully you can take bits and pieces that are motivational for you. And if you're wondering why I included like non-medical things, it's because my life does not only revolve around interview prep or anything like that. Like I have to work. I like doing things. So I have them in the vlog. So yeah. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, bye.